If you wanna create a shatter effect like this for a graphic or some text or pretty much anything inside of After Effects, I'm gonna show you the easiest way how to do it and give you a free download for this exact effect. So let's start out with a blank canvas and I'm just gonna add this graphic, but you can also add text or really anything else that you want that has a transparent background. But now it's important to note that if you choose to use text, the thicker the font, the much better your effect is going to look. Pencil thin font isn't gonna look nearly as good as something that's thick and bold. Next up, we wanna pre-compose this layer and move everything to the new composition so that when we click on this new pre-comp, our layer takes up the full framing of the composition. Now we can go ahead and add the shatter effect from within our effects panel. It's gonna start just by making it look like your composition is a bunch of bricks falling over, but if we go up to view and switch it to rendered instead, our graphic is gonna take on the appearance of shattering blocks. So now that we've already got the base effect happening, the rest is just stylizing it and making it look awesome. Go up to shape and let's change the shape from bricks to glass and set the repetitions to something like 50 but a different number might look better depending on what it is that you're shattering. So now our segments are looking smaller and a little closer to what I would like personally, but you might also notice that this is impacting our entire image, which is cool, but nothing special. But the effect that I showed at the beginning is just a small portion, like a localized explosion. So to do that, we need a little bit of prep work, but it's actually pretty simple. Let's go ahead and right click on our section down here and select new solid. Let's create a new white solid, the same size as our composition. Now we actually don't need to show it, so let's go ahead and hide it by hitting this icon down here. Okay, so why did we do that? Well, now we can basically create a mask around the area we want this explosion to be isolated to, but make sure that this mask is happening on our solid white layer. So let's take our pen tool with our hidden solid layer highlighted and make a shape that's generally around the area that we want. Don't worry about making it perfect, this is easy to adjust later on. And right now, nothing should be different yet until we highlight our shatter layer and go up to effect controls and under gradient, go to gradient layer and choose the solid layer we just created and set it to mask. Then finally set the shatter threshold to 1%. Now what you should see is that our shatter effect is isolated to the area that we masked out on our solid layer. But what's even better is that if we highlight that mask again, and then move it around, everything reacts and updates with the mask in real time. But there's one thing that we haven't accomplished yet. Right now our explosion just sort of pops off and then falls away. It's trying really hard to be realistic rather than stylized. So here's a way that we can give it a bullet time style effect like the one that I showed at the very beginning. Start by going up to physics and then selecting the gravity value and setting it to zero. Now, if a shard starts moving in any direction, it will keep going in that direction off until infinity. But there's another really important value that we need to increase, viscosity. Basically, a viscosity of zero is like outer space where there's no friction and nothing's gonna stop it from flying off into infinity. While raising the viscosity number higher is like turning the air around the object into a molasses or thick gooey stuff that catches it and slows it down. So if we raise this value up to about 0.5, we can see that we get an effect where it slows down a little bit, and we can play around with this value as well as the strength value under force one, which will help to push our shards with greater speed at the very beginning, which will send them a little bit further. Or you can reduce it to make the initial explosion less intense and the shards will go a shorter distance. Play around with these two and see what kind of results you get, but I really like this set of values right here. And another nice little touch is that by default, you have in the physics section here, the mass variance set to about 30%, which basically means that some shards will be treated as heavier than others, but it's not a crazy difference. But what that does is that makes things stop at different times, adding to the overall bullet time effect. If you turn the mass variance down to zero, everything's gonna stop at exactly the same time. And turning it up to 100% is just gonna make things go wild. I like it at about 30%, but just in case you wanted to change that. And finally, if you wanted more sections to explode at the same time, you can add more by going back here to your hidden solid layer and creating another mask. 
and another explosion will take place at the same time, and you can add as many as you want in as many different places as you want. The only thing to consider is that wherever you make this mask, the explosion will be directed away from the position of the explosion source, which you can find here, and you can change by moving the position sliders or clicking here to get a crosshair and then manually selecting a location. If you wanted, you could also create a second source of the explosion by setting the force to radius value to 0.4 as well and then choosing a position for that to explode from. Now, the two of these together are gonna be stronger than the original one alone, so if you choose to use two, then you might need to decrease both of them in order to get the same result that you got with one. Part of this will kind of depend on the shape and size of the thing that you're shattering in your composition. Now, you might think that we're done, but there's actually one more really important thing that we need to figure out, and that's timing. Right now, our shatter just happens at the very first frame that our layer is visible, but if you wanted to change when the shatter actually happens, like waiting a couple seconds and then it shatters, how do you do that? Well, all you have to do is keyframe your radius here. Move your playhead to where you want it to start the explosion. So for me, that's about here. And click the stopwatch icon to set a keyframe. Now move back one frame and set this value to zero. And there you go. This is now the starting location of the shatter effect. And changing the timing now is as simple as moving these two keyframes forwards and backwards in time in your composition. And if you needed to find these keyframes really quickly, a nice little tip is that you can highlight this layer and hit the U key, and now only things that you've keyframed will become visible. Just a nice little organizational tip. Now that the effect is done, all we have to do is really sell it. And we can do that by going down here and adding a new adjustment layer and placing it over top of everything and adding a position wiggle effect on top of that adjustment layer and keyframe it to start at zero and jump up to about 40 and 80 respectively. And then back down to make it look like your object quickly jitters as it hits. Slap down a couple of explosion and shattering sound effects and the end result is that you've got something like this. And on top of showing you guys how to do this, I also wanted to give you this effect for free in the form of an After Effects template that you can download at the link in the description below. And the reason that I wanted to give this to you at the end is because now you have all the information for what you need to change to get it to do exactly what you want it to do. Once you open it up or drag it into a larger After Effects project, you can go to this folder here and either type in the text that you want or place down the object that you want and boom, all of the work is done for you. And if you wanted to learn all about how to use Rotobrush version three inside of After Effects, I've got an entire tutorial breaking that down. I'll see you over there.